So last time we talked about um, the idea of the Lost Cause and how it had sort of seeped into becoming to what some people believe as part of their identity. Now, this takes on an even more interesting spin if you think of the idea of the Lost Cause as a religion. Now, hold on, you may be thinking, the Lost Cause... Um, it's not a religion, it's, it's, you know, it's revisionist history. How can it be a religion? Well, I found a very interesting article, and I, I, you know, I can't disagree with its points, but, you know, we'll go through it. So, it starts. Near the end of the Civil War, women from Columbus began to care for soldiers' graves. One of them, uh, Liz, uh, Lizzie Rut Rutterford, proposed an annual observance to decorate graves, inaugurating Confederate Memorial Day. 30, 30 years later, one of, uh, one of the Columbus women uh, compared their work to that of Mary Magdalene and the other women who came to Christ's grave. In a way, this was an apt comparison, but what the women in Columbus were engaged in was no less than a new form of Southern religion. History, historians refer to this as the Lost Cause religion, which was uh, interdominational and functioned as a culture religion. The term Lost Cause is not a modern invention. It was used by Southerners immediately after the war. Many scholars uh, attribute the term to a Virginian journalist named Edward A. Pollard and his post-war books, including The Lost Cause, A New Southern History of the War from the co uh, of the Confederacies. The Lost Cause concept supplied a heroic interpretation of the war so that Southerners could maintain their sense of honour. As Georgian Clement Evans, a war veteran, put it, if we cannot justify the South in an act of secession, we will go down in history solely as brave, impulsive, but rash people who attempted an illegal, um, in, a, in an illegal manner to overthrow the union of our country. The assertion of the lost cause was the solution. The argument of the lost cause insists the South fought nobly against all odds not to preserve slavery, but entirely for other reasons, such as the rights uh, of states to govern themselves and that the Southerners were forced to defend themselves against Northern aggression. When the idea of the southern nation uh, was defeated on the battlefield, a vision of a separate southern people with a distinct and a noble uh, cultural character remained. The term culture religion refers to ideals of a, that a given group of people desire to strengthen or rest restore. The lost cause religion sought to maintain the concept of a distinct, superior, white southern culture against perceived attacks. Major com uh, components of religion include myth, symbol, and the expression through rituals. The Lost Cause uh, culture religion has manifested all three. So, what are the myths? Well, when scholars of religion refer to myth, they do not mean to imply a falsehood. Rather, in the context of religious studies, a myth is a foundational or sacred story, a story that explains a, a story that explains. The lost cause proponents uh, knew well the power of myth. The main components of the lost cause myth, repeated in writings, sermons, lectures, and speeches by scores of post-war Southern figures, are easily identified. First, the pre-war South. The Old South was a place of nobility and chivalry. There is no better uh, capsule descrip description of the Old South of the Lost Cause myth than the opening of the words from the film Gone with the Wind. Um, it is an Gallic reference now that a vanished um, to the now vanished pretty world of cavaliers and cornfields. They were they were gallantry took the, they gallantly took the last bow um, in the second component of the lost cause dogma the civil war was recast as a defense of the south against the aggressive 
money-grubbing northerners. In the Lost Cause myth-making, the War of the Rebellion, as the federal government called it, became the War of Aggression. While Southerners were a people of honour and purity, northern Northerners were invaders, a people consumed by lust for power. Finally, Lost Cause proponents preached the message that adherence to the civility of pre-war South meant that the cause was not truly lost. Victory would come if white Southerners maintained their superior and pure culture. The South needed not a separate political not the, the South needed not to separate politically to rise uh, to rise again, but spiritually. The message spread far and wide by agents of the lost cause, but perhaps no voice was more persistent and vocal than of Georgian Mildred Lewis Rutherford, a long-time um, uh, historian general of the United uh, Daughters of the Confederacy, who tirelessly promoted uh, the glories of the Old South. Her 1920 book, uh, Truths of History, promotes a lost cause interpretation of the Civil War in opposed to what Rutherford viewed as false claims of Northern historians. So that's essentially your your Bible and your myth making. So what about symbols? Well, symbols are all over the place. Some of the major symbols of the lost cause are conveniently laid out in Memorial Day address given in nineteen um, in a sorry in eighteen ninety six by Clement Evans, who in addition to being a veteran was also a Methodist minister and one time commander of the United Confederate Veterans. Evans referred to a deep and honourable respect uh, for some things which we can all call ourselves mementos. They are, he said, sacred, limiting himself to only three which deserved our perpetual common, uh, common, common memorials. Uh, he listed the song Dixie, the Confederate battle flag and the grey uniform of the South. Um, living symbols of the lost cause uh, may be added to Evan's list, such as the Confederate soldiers and the officers uh, Jefferson Davis, Robert E. Lee and Thomas Stonewall Jackson. Each played a major role in the veneration of the lost cause and were often regarded as Moses and Christ-like figures by the lost cause disciples. Uh, they were also a figure uh, of evil in the lost cause religion. Um, Several of the Lost Cause proponent, proponents accuse James Longstreet of losing the war by his actions at Gettysburg. In the process, Longstreet became identified as a Judas-like figure and was frequently denied the, tribute, the tributaries customly paid to the Lees and Jacksons and others. So, again, I can't argue with that, considering what I've sort of why I've seen and witnessed and reading about the Lost Cause. So now we move on to rituals. So in addition to um, Confederate Memorial Day, uh, the Sabbath of the South, additional rituals honoured Confederate veterans, especially the erection of Confederate monuments, um, which served as reminders of the Lost Cause throughout the year and as a focal point for cultural memory. Uh, historian Gaines M. Foster has identified 94 Confederate mon monuments that were erected uh, in the South by 1885, and a further 406 were added by 1912. Some of the oldest of these monuments are in Georgia, uh, such as the Pillar in downtown Athens, which was erected in 1872, and perhaps uh, the most sordid Confederate memorials uh, in the state are in Savannah, Atlanta and Augusta. The Augusta Monument contains what may be the most common inscription on Georgia's Confederate monuments. Uh, no nation rose so white and fair, none fell so pure of crime. A lost cause sentiment to be sure. Such then are the major components of the lost cause. Myth, symbol and rituals. 
Uh, the Old South of the Lost Cause myth was represented by symbols such as a confederate flag and recalled through rituals such as Memorial Day. The cult religion was reinforced by the efforts of by the efforts of confederate veterans, women and mainstream religious figures. Among the latter, a premier example is J. William Jones, a Baptist minister known as the Evangelist of the Lost Cause. In a sermon given to veterans in 1990, sorry, 1900, uh, Jones asked, When the roll is called up yonder, those assembled would be prepared to cross over the river. And the rest under the sh and rest under the shade of trees with Davis Lee and Jackson and the other Christian comrades who wait and watch for your coming. For Jones and the other adherents to the Lost Cause religion, Confederate her heroism and Christianity piety went hand in hand. So as you can see there, that quite convin convincingly states out a very good case that the Lost Cause. Is, is a religion, a cultural religion to Southerners. And as you can see, this is why it plays so much into identity. Um, just as, you know, Christianity plays into lots of other people's identities, you know, whatever religion you want to name it, it plays into people's identities. So it makes perfect sense why people would be so upset um, when people are, you know, wanted to take down these statues they feel like part of their religion is being lost i think that's an important part to understand when you look at um sort of the the people who are trying to defend these monuments um they're almost doing it from a stance of religious dogma more than anything else